Hi everyone, welcome back. This is week 27 of my social isolation get ready with me's. I asked this week on Instagram stories if you guys wanted to see the Urban Decay electric palette, which I totally thought would win, or the Pinky Rose Bright Lights palette. Uh, Pinky Rose Bright Lights won with 67% of the vote, so that's what we're going to be using today. I picked this up, I think it was at IMATS LA, which was probably three years ago now. How the heck did that happen? Anyway, uh, I honestly haven't heard that much from the brand since they released a lot of these palettes, but this one was a real winner for me and it's the only one I believe I own by the brand. So the Bright Lights palette um, is basically a really bright rainbow palette. There are a few pressed glitters in here and most of the shades overall are matte out of the actual eyeshadows. There are two shimmers though, this one here and then that one here. And then you can obviously see where the press glitters are. But um, I'm feeling a very green-ish look today. Um, not sure if that really worked with the green shirt, but the sort of like turquoisey background, but we're gonna make something work. So this week, um, I was coming back to work after having had a week off. And I know I had mentioned that um, we had lost a coworker recently because she got another job and I was really worried about the workload. This week turned out to be a lot better, but I have to tell you, digging my way out of, it was probably 300 emails at one point. It was, it was an unbelievable amount of emails. Uh, was uh, challenging. However, once I got on top of that, the workload didn't actually feel that bad, which is great, um, because I was expecting an absolute like firestorm of just nonsense to deal with but it felt okay-ish. I don't know how long this is going to be really sustainable for because um, if you missed it last time I talked about the fact that the bank that I work for is in a hiring freeze due to COVID so we're not replacing people even if they leave um, which honestly doesn't make a lot of sense if you lose the complement of the person on your team you should be able to replace them right but we just don't operate that way so uh, we're kind of in a holding pattern to hire somebody um, and I'm hoping it's sooner rather than later but the other thing I think about too is like it is not going to be easy training somebody virtually I don't even like training somebody like in person I find it really disorienting almost I know that sounds weird but like training virtually I have no idea how we're gonna do that ah uh, yes once again I have forgotten to clean my brushes so I'm trying to use the least dirty ones that I have Okay, so what we're gonna start off with in this palette is I'm gonna take Lit. <laughs> Reminds me of a friend of mine who says that all the time. Uh, we're gonna take Lit and we're gonna put that through the crease. And yellow through the crease frightens me, frankly, but I saw a friend do it um, several years ago to blend out a green and I couldn't believe how well it worked. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. Yeah, like to me that's just like too bright for the crease really but somehow it works with the green okay so as i said i'm going to be using that yellow to blend down into a green so um i'm going to be taking smash here and that's going to go in the crease just below the yellow color right there Ooh, that is not as pigmented as i thought it was going to be i've used this palette a lot before but i guess i've not really layered it like this just gonna have to pack it on a little bit more okay for the lid I'm gonna go in with glitz on a flat shader brush this is one of the shimmering colors in the palette I'm just putting it right there <laughs> I'm looking at this look right now going mm, is this a good idea I mentioned this before but sometimes you get a vision in your head and it just doesn't work out but we'll see we'll see it through to the end <laughs> But I don't like how that's applying it dry, so I'm going to apply it wet now. Oh, there we go. Much better. Okay, so next, the part that I'm hoping will tie all of this together, I'm going to take Punky right here, and I'm going to put that on the outer corner and pray that everything just kind of comes together perfectly, which I think it is right now. Look at that, it's not sticking to that patch of skin right there. I hate when that happens, because sometimes there's no real reason why an area of eyeshadow won't stick to the skin. Look at all the fallout I'm getting here. Ooh, you know, I don't ever remember having a problem with this palette, but I'm having a hell of a time getting these colors to like blend together and stick to my skin properly. Okay, because the palette doesn't have a brow and highlight shade, I'm just going in with my Wet n Wild Brulee Single. 
And then I gotta clean this fallout up because that is, that's intense. <laughs> As per usual, I'm going to add some winged liner with my Physician's Formula Eye Booster. Okay, so uh, done the winged liner. Let's do the face before we go back to the eyes. I totally forgot I had this. This is the Inglot Beautifier Tinted Cream of the shade 103. It was somewhere at the back of like my backup sort of area in my makeup collection. I pulled this out and I was like, why the heck haven't I been using this? Because I really love it. I don't remember how the color tone is. It's on the paler side, I know that, but I don't think it's like full coverage. So I should be okay to get away with using it. So it's kind of like a thicker cream as it slides down my hand. I mean, it's a little bit liquidy, but it's, uh, not too sloppy, I guess you could say. I just remember absolutely loving this stuff. It was sent to me by the brand um, quite a while ago now. Uh, oh, Inglot, that's a sad story. They've had such lack of luck, I feel like, in the Canadian market. They used to have a headquarter uh, in Montreal, and like I feel like it was 10 years ago or so, they used to actually have counters in different malls in Toronto, um, but they eventually closed up and then I think they closed their Montreal office and then reopened one at Dundas Square in downtown Toronto. Um, but they recently closed that up too. And I'm so sad because Inglot is one of my absolute favorite brands. Um, not a lot of people talk about them really, but their single shadows are like the best on the market as far as I'm concerned. Um, so yeah, the one in downtown Toronto closed up and now I think you can order online, but um, there's no like physical store where you can go to. Like the only ones that I can think of now are like overseas physical stores, which is kind of frustrating. Um, but yeah, I do love them to pieces and I'm sad to see that they just don't succeed in the Canadian market somehow. So this seems like an okay match. Actually, that's melding in really nicely. Oh, I'm remembering why I like this stuff so much. So it was my mom's birthday this past weekend um, and I sent her flowers, um, but it's just, <laughs> This happens basically every time, but it's so funny to me that you order something specific on a website for flowers and what they get is like totally different. I think I've got pictures of both so I can show them to you. So here's what I ordered and then here's what showed up. Like the color scheme is not even the same. Um, and I got something with daisies specifically because my mom really likes daisies. And uh, what showed up were not daisies, they were, they were Gerberas, or at least that's what my mom told me, I'm not very good with flowers. And I was just like, what the heck? Like, this is totally different. And I know flower places will substitute items they just don't have what they have on hand. But when the specific item that I ordered is called, give her a daisy a day, and daisies don't show up, I'm just like, what happened here? You know, I think this is the best matching foundation in recent weeks and months <laughs> that I've managed to put on my face. Okay, moving on to a bronzer. I'm gonna be using the Too Faced uh, Milk Chocolate Soleil, so their palest shade. Um, I put a significant dent in it. You know, I always say that on camera and then I look in the viewfinder, I'm like, it doesn't look like you've done anything to its shell. And this never changes. I just put it on my temples. Oop, my crown's in my way back to my cheekbones and then drag the remainder along my jawline. And I've been using this bigger brush recently for bronzer but I don't think I like it because it feels like it's just going everywhere. Or maybe that's the point. I was complaining before that my smaller brushes were too precise for application but this one just feels too bloody big. I must have something in the middle <laughs> in terms of sizing for brushes. For blush, I usually struggle with this kind of eyeshadow color and what blushes to use. So I'm just gonna use something relatively neutral pink. This is Tarte's Party Blush. I have it in the mini size. You know, the one that we all got for our, our birthday gift several years ago. And just putting a little bit of that on. Just want a little bit of color, but I don't want anything to like really like clash with what I've got going on. I'm really excited to film my video after this um, because it's a haul and I ordered a whole bunch of bath bombs from this like Canadian uh, company uh, close to Ottawa. They're in Embrun, Ontario, and it's called JoJo's Bath Bombs. And the look of these things is unreal. Like they blow lush out of the water. Um, and I can't wait to film this video so I can talk about all the products that I got this month so I can finally go use them. 
But yeah, this company, I mean, it's just a woman as far as I'm aware, makes these uh, handcrafted bath bombs and they're unreal. Like the quality and appearance of them and the intricacy that goes into these bath bombs is wild. And they're no different in terms of cost in comparison to like lush ones. And yet the quality looks unbelievably better. <laughs> Okay, so for highlighter, I wanted something that was gonna match the green yellowish stuff going on. So I'm using the ABH Aurora Glow Kit, and I'm gonna be going in with Helia right here because it's kind of a yellow green reflecting color. And when my skin gets a little bit paler uh, throughout the colder months, I tend to much prefer using colorful highlighters then because I just feel like it looks a little bit better than in comparison to when my skin is a little bit more tan. And I'm putting way too much on. All right, try to blend that out. Okay, that is face done. Let's zoom you back in and finish up the eyes. I'm gonna start with my lower waterline and I'm taking the NYX Off Tropic uh, Pro Liner in the shade, what do you call it, So Fresh. And I'm just layering it on here. And I mention this every time now, but I'm getting it in the roots of my lashes because I want the shadow that I'm gonna put below to blend uh, into this. And when I say roots of the lashes, I do mean that I'm like overlapping this area. So it's a little bit thick when you apply it. And for that lower lash line, I am gonna go in with Punky, which was our outer corner color up there. So I'm just wiping off my brush that I use for the lower lash line color uh, because I just wanna blend this out without using anything else because I'm about to go in with a glitter and I don't want this color up here down here for once, um, but I want a smoother fade here. And my, <laughs> my under eye area, it's fairly floppy so when I'm trying to blend this I feel like the skin just moves around so freaking much so now what I'm gonna do is the glitter here called dazzle I want to put this on my inner corner and then drag it through my lower lash line I'm hoping it's gonna look good I'm gonna use this tiny brush I'm not using any kind of glitter glue because the stuff in here is actually quite adhesive there's something in the particles of this that actually stick quite well on the skin so I don't really need a glitter glue. Whoop. And this is not working how I want it. I need something a little bit more precise. Let's try this one. And I just want to drag it down through here a little bit, but not go the whole way. And I'm trying to get <laughs> this in here to disperse a little bit, but it, it's definitely stuck in certain areas keep changing up what brush I'm using because none of them are doing exactly what I want. There we go. That's kind of what I want. Just a little bit of a scattering of glitter right there, but I want it to stop before it continues all the way out. Don't really know why, just something I kind of thought of. So I get that look. I'm actually bringing it quite low here, which is not what I expected to do, but I like how that's turning out. Okay, so that's essentially where I'm gonna leave the glitter. It's not precise, which is what I wanted. I just wanted to look like an explosion coming out from the inner corners of my eyes. And I think I've achieved that. So I'm gonna continue with putting my mascara on, my false lashes, and then my eyebrows, and then I'll be right back and we'll finish up with the lips. Okay, so for lips, I'm gonna keep it fairly simple because that's a lot going on for the eyes. And I recently got one of the Bite Beauty Yay Sayer Plumping Lip Glosses. This is in the shade Sugar Drizzle, which is really just like a clear with a lot of um, glitter sparkles in it. Oh, man, that is not showing that well. There, you can kind of see it there. There's a lot of like glitter particles, but it's basically clear. So what's interesting about these is the fact that the lip gloss um, top comes off. I mean, obviously you've got this sort of like applicator, which is not soft, by the way, this is like quite hard. It is not malleable whatsoever, which when I first saw these, I thought it was kind of like rubbery. They're not. Anyway, what the best part about this is, is that when you twist it, the product comes out the top, but it pushes the product down in here and then it pushes it up through the center of the tube. So you know exactly how much lip gloss you have left in this thing and you don't have to do that horrible thing where you got a lip gloss wand, you're like digging around in there and you can never get all of the product. This solves all of those problems and I think it's freaking genius. So anyway, I got a little bit of product and it's going straight on. There is cinnamon oil in these, which is intended to plump up your lips, but honestly, I don't really taste cinnamon. Actually, I'm whipping it off because I had a lot of foundation left on my lips and I don't like that look with the gloss on top, so I'm gonna reapply it. Okay, there we go. Now my natural lips, sort of. Look a little bit red right now. 
There we go. Now, I've heard people say that you can't feel the glitter in this stuff, but I don't know what they're talking about. It's not super gritty, but it's definitely there. <laughs> so that's the gloss on, and honestly, I think this kind of packaging is genius. Like, <laughs> more glosses need to be like this, because I can't stand having to scoop around and you never get all the products, so especially love this packaging. Also, I think the cinnamon's supposed to be plumping on the lips. I don't feel any plumping action going on. Like my lips are not tingling. Um, I definitely don't feel like my lips are getting any bigger. Although I really don't care about that kind of stuff. Um, I just like the overall effect of the gloss. Okay, so that is it for week 27. This is my Pinky Rose Bright Lights uh, look. It ended up a little bit differently than I had originally intended, but I kind of like that explosion of glitter coming outwards. It looks a little bit different than what I would normally do. Um, I did struggle a little bit with this palette today, and I don't remember having issues before. I don't know if maybe the product's a little bit old at this point and just not blending as nicely as before, um, but I definitely struggled with some of the like patchiness in here. Um, just sort of the shadows adhering to my eyes. I don't, I don't know what was going on. Anyway, I have routinely liked this palette, so I'm not really bashing it. It just, something didn't work out that great today for me. Anyway, so that's gonna be it for week 27 of my social isolation get ready with me. So I enjoyed the play around with this palette because it's been a while since I've touched it. I feel like the last time I used it was probably a pride look and I don't think it was this year. It might've been last year. Anyway, thanks for sitting through the whole video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will hopefully see you next time. Bye.